Welcome to The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, dear listeners, I am very excited about tonight's guest. And tonight we have Stephen Bancars on the show. Stephen was a well-known New Ager and his conversion caused quite a stir among New Agers and Christians alike. In recent months, he shared his, his testimony on radio and TV shows such as the 700 Club on CBN. Hi, Stephen, and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It'll be fun. Yeah, and um, your your surname is is really interesting. It's a lovely surname. What, what, where does that? Ben Cars is, I believe, Polish. Um, my dad's side is Polish and Russian, and there's a prop- mm-hmm. proper European pronunciation of it that I I, I honestly don't know. So yeah. the Eng- the English you know transliteration of it is Ben Cars. So that's what we go with. Uh-huh. Oh, it's a lovely one. <laughs> um, and as I said, you know, I've been excited to, to have you on the show. And when I heard of, of your salvation two years ago, I rejoiced for days. You know, I, I just felt like I was walking on air. It was like an absolute dream come true. Um. I was just I was just so excited and you know I've been saved out of the new age 20 years ago and I've shared my story on TV radio and so on but I've always felt frustrated that there just wasn't many folks like us sharing through the media so myself and many people have been praying for someone just like you and someone well known you know that that could bring many new agers to Jesus so I'm sure you're one of those people that myself and others have been praying for all these years and it's wonderful that that God has saved you. Thank you. Yeah, I I honestly feel well, for one that he's called me to this particular ministry, but also I mm-hmm. I share in your your burden with you that there is like this kind of um frustration and a longing and a, a yeah. grieving to see someone in, influential yeah. in the new age movement turn to Christ because it's yeah. like amen, amen to all the people who are influ Mm-hmm. you know, fr- from ministry and who are putting aside new age stuff or giving their life to Christ. But I want to see God call more people, more leaders, trailblazers out of the new age movement. And it seems as though he started to do that with Doreen Virtue. Um, I've been in contact with her since she, you know, made her testimony video recently. And um, she's been on, on weekly calls mm-hmm. with myself and with some admins from my community group on Facebook. And it's just been um, a blessing. Wow. To see the Lord do a work in her. Like our God is big and there's no one who is, uh, you know, too far gone to save. Like I'm living proof of that. And um, when I heard Doreen was was coming to the Lord and came to the Lord through Jesus, I was I was rejoicing for days, you know, my worship grew deeper, just oh, just like yours did. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's awesome to see, yeah. you know, people come out of the new age movement into Christ. It's just um, it's a delight. And you know, I really commend you and and thank you f- for for reaching out to her and and to um, keeping in contact with her. That's that's wonderful, Stephen. It really thrills my heart um, to hear that. And I know there's been some negative and positive comments, you know, thrown about 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 her. But you know, I've been saved twenty years, and it's a walk. It's a process. We don't become. Um, we don't have all the answers the very next day yes. um, that we get converted. We don't suddenly know all, and <laughs> um, it's a sanctification process, isn't it? And the Lord uh, leads us bit by bit. Absolutely, I didn't. Uh, I didn't believe in the Trinity until maybe eight months after I got saved. Like I was, I was, I was actually yeah. in, uh, in in deliverance, and they were trying to get me to say Jesus is God in my in my deliverance, and I was like. 
And I was like, I, I don't understand what that means, though. And and they had to, like, pry it out of me, and I ended mm-hmm. up saying it, but I couldn't reconcile that with the Father being God. And I, so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it took me, like, eight months to understand the Trinity, to understand the gospel. It is a process. It's a sanctification sure. process, and it starts sure. at the moment of salvation. And, um, you know, we can trust that if someone is truly saved, God will continue to lead them um, deeper and deeper into repentance, into a knowledge of the truth. And, um, you know, thankfully his grace has been on me to help correct these misunderstandings that I initially had um, when I was first saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think when we've been through, uh, you know, myself, as I say, I was saved 20 years ago. I think when we've been through um, different learning curves, we then realize for other Christians, they, they don't, you know, turn into a mature Christian overnight we we remember how it was for us and um, it is important to have that grace um, for someone and that patience as as they grow so it's really wonderful Um, and before we go on to your testimony I also wanted to tell our dear listeners that you have an apologetics ministry um, that's right that is really, really superb, um, and I love that. Especially, I especially love it when it's a ex New Ager who's involved in that ministry because I think out of all the different people groups, New Agers are one of those groups that they really need to hear the evidence against zeitgeist and Christ myths. You know that that Jesus wasn't just a, a reincarnation of a previous so called savior. And that there is real evidence for his life, death, and resurrection. Um, and really that the media is biased against sharing these truths. So it's, I think it's fantastic that, that you are into apologetics. It's a hard word to say, isn't it? <laughs> apologetics, yeah. It comes from the, it comes from the Greek word apologia, which means to make a defense. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that word comes primarily from, I believe it's... I don't want to be getting it wrong. I think it's First Peter two fifteen, where you know, always be or one fifteen, always be prepared to give a defense and apologia to those who ask uh, the reason for the hope that is in you. So, um, sure. I started an apologetics ministry for one because um, pri- when I was in the New Age movement, I loved Christian apologetics. That's what a lot of people don't know about my my, my story is that like when I was writing. New Age blogs when I was in the New Age movement researching this stuff, I was also just as heavily involved in Christian apologetics because I loved the arguments <laughs> for the existence of God. I loved the philosophical training. I was a philosophy yeah. major in, yeah. in, in university. And yeah. so I loved the arguments for God's existence because I always I always hated, yeah. hated atheism. It was always like just I, I never liked it. So, um, mm-hmm. And then when I got saved, people in the New Age movement were like, well, wait a minute, why are you choosing Jesus? Jesus is one of many ascended masters, you know, or Jesus Jesus never existed in the yeah, first place, yeah. or Jesus never, Jesus' resurrection mm-hmm. was just a myth. And so I started researching these things and, and put this stuff together on a website to answer questions that, well, objections that people were, um, you know, putting forth coming from the New Age movement. Uh-huh. And was that the exposingthenewage.com? Yep, so I initially made an exposingthenewage.com, which was exclusively going at the New Age movement. And then I realized, you know, it's a little bit too narrow in its scope. And so I I have a new website now, reasonsforjesus.com, where not only do I address New Age topics, but, but topics from, you know, um, just arguments for God's existence, you know, other people's testimonies, uh, historical evidence for Christ, uh, reasons to believe in the reliability of Scripture, and so forth. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful. I really love it. And you've got a Facebook page of the same title, Reasons for Jesus, and that's a really good Facebook page as well. And you can mention them again okay, at awesome. the end of the show. So. Yeah, that would be great. So basically, Stephen, just jump in and, and tell us your your testimony and tell us about your childhood. What, what was that like? Were you interested in spiritual things as a child? Yeah, I mean, I was very interested in spiritual things as a child. Um, there's a lot of people who grew up, you know, Christian in a Christian household, and then, then they have the, the prodigal son story where they depart from the faith and then come back. But for me, it wasn't just growing up in a Christian household. Like, I was homeschooled under a Christian curriculum. 
and I rotated in between Christian private school and Christian homeschooling until grade six. I didn't hit public wow. school till grade wow. seven, and I was in and out of church that whole time, you know, um, Bible, Bible stories before bed each night. And, and when I got into to high school, I guess, even in high school, I still I still believed in a Christian worldview. I didn't have that personal relationship with the Lord, though. Even when I was in a church in church as a child, I didn't have a personal conviction of His Lordship. Mm-hmm. Um, I might I might okay might have in some kind of underdeveloped way, I, but I didn't have a relationship with Him as my Lord and Savior. Um, and sure. and any reverence I had for Him got you know slowly perverted out of me as I got more involved in the public education system. Um, But when I hit grade nine, I started to really get into, I guess, young earth creationism. There's someone named Dr. Kent Hovind, who's a young earth creationist, and he um, has a ministry that Mm -hmm. essentially goes against the mainstream idea of evolution of natural selection of you know the old earth and stuff and i was i was obsessed with watching his presentations in grade nine fascinating stuff yeah it really it, it really is and and the evidence for you know dinosaurs coexisting with man it was blowing my mind and so i started bringing it up with my friends yeah. and with some of my teachers and um i just i was thirsty i was thirsty for the truth i was thirsty for something um and i was i'd always had a curious mind and, and I guess my curiosity, uh, if you have curiosity, it's good, amen. We should all have curiosity. But it has to be guided and driven by the proper um, assumptions and the proper worldview. Otherwise, it, it can lead you down any which path. And so essentially, I was mm-hmm. really curious about you know life on other planets. And I started getting, getting into UFO research and alien research. Um, which is like the ultimate gateway into occultism. And what really did it for me was this program called Ancient Aliens. It's a program that, you know, I think it's still on on History Channel 2 or 3, but it was on the main History Channel for a while. And I saw an episode, and it essentially puts forth something called the Ancient Astronaut Theory, which is the idea that all of these legends in the ancient world from you know gods coming mm-hmm. down from the sky in their flying shields or their flying chariots, chariots of fire. Um, that what ancient man was really trying to describe here was flesh and blood alien encounters with intergalactic you know species from another planet. And yeah. um, in, in ancient aliens, they go to a bunch of these different you know megalithic structures that ancient man seemingly didn't have the knowledge to be able to build and they would say you know how could how could they drill through rock this hard this perfectly they didn't have drills how did they lug all this stuff up this mountain when the quarry was you know 100 miles down at the foot of the mountain mm-hmm. and there's all these different circumstantial pieces of evidence that when put together make someone think you know it's definitely possible that ancient man was visited by something by someone and that they gave them knowledge culture tools information um and this to me you know whet my appetite for for alien research and when i started to to consider these things in light of the biblical worldview it seemed to be problematic because then the questions arise um does every alien culture have their own bible did God give a Bible to every single planet in the universe that has intelligent life on it? Did Jesus have to go to every single planet with intelligent life and die for their sins too? Um, and then I started to yeah. think, well, how do I even know that you know the God who created me in this planet is not just some more intelligent being, some intelligent alien? And you know, thanks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thankfully, that thought only lasted for about 10 seconds because then I realized, well, even the aliens would need a creator themselves. So I never lost my belief in God. Exactly. So I never lost my belief in aliens during that time – or sorry, in God during that time. But I also had this belief in aliens. Now, that to me – you can't get into alien research for very long um, until you start getting into contact material. Until you start getting into alien abduction accounts mm-hmm. where people are being pulled out of body, yeah, um, and then 
then you get hit with you know astral projection and channeled material and um then and the channeled material the contact material that you know it, quote unquote aliens who you know they're not aliens they're not flesh and blood there's no evidence that they're flesh and blood there's no planet there's no ancient culture in history that believe these beings came from another planet. You can't find that in a single ancient text. All of these cultures, something something ancient aliens doesn't like to tell people, is that all these ancient cultures that were visited by these aliens, you know, the Babylonians, the Incans, the Mayans, the Aztecs, the, you know, first dynasty Egypt, pre-dynastic Egypt, um, uh, just all these Mesoamerican cultures, Native American cultures, mm-hmm. They all had one thing, Sumerians, all these cultures were obsessed with human sacrifice, human blood sacrifice to these gods, to these de- deities. Yeah. So if these are really yeah. just, you know, our cosmic brothers and sisters from a distant galaxy, how come ancient man believed that the way to appease them and contact them was to offer live human children up to yeah. them and to do spiritual religious ceremony? Um, what and also... Sorry for interrupting, but but also, you know, a lot of these, um, if we look down through history, a lot of the so-called alien contacts, often these different alien races, um, quote-unquote, would actually lie to people. Um, And one of the things they would often lie about was actually where they were from. Sometimes they would claim they were from, you know, Mars, and then years and years later it would be the Sirius Star system. And then it would be the Pleiades, you know, so th- there's often lies as well that are interwoven in there. And that's just another little um, alarm bell. I know. Yeah, it's really strange. I, I mean, there's some channeled material I've, I've read in the past and and some of the stuff they say about human history, about like the timelines of human history. Some of it is like demonstrably false. And it makes me wonder, like this person's. Mm-hmm either operating under a false spirit and they're self-deceived or these aliens <laughs> don't know human history very well um, but all this contact material curiously enough mm-hmm. it, it seems peculiar how they would travel you know millions of light years to come contact us just to teach us new age theology and to, t- and to teach us how to deny mm-hmm. Christ and that's essentially what they do um, a universal theme in contact material is yep. Anti-Christ, anti-Christian. It's a Gnostic mm-hmm. gospel based on knowledge of self, on special knowledge of, of divine things, on mm-hmm. contemplation, on on self-awareness and self-discovery. And that's a universal theme within all contacting material. And I've noticed that too. And I had two, two people on my show, Stephen, who had been into... Uh, New Age um, UFO mm. cults, two people who didn't know each other, and each of these people, when they had been visited by these so-called aliens, the aliens told them to renounce Jesus Christ mm. if they wanted to receive um, information from these aliens. And I thought that's interesting. They didn't say renounce Buddha or renounce Hindu gods, renounce yoga, renounce meditation. No renounce Jesus exactly Christ. and that's that's really a red flag for anyone in the new age movement you gotta you gotta realize that you will not find a, a piece of channel material where these beings will go at length to try to explain away Muhammad they don't mm-hmm. care Muhammad's not a threat to them Muhammad's not of interest to them even though Islam's you know one of the largest religions of the world, fastest growing religion in the world right now, they'll never go out of their way to say, you know, you guys don't need to believe in Muhammad. Muhammad was just one of many prophets. Nobody cares, right? Um, they don't go out of the way to try and account for, for Buddha, explain Buddha away. But when it comes to Christ, there's, I mean, I could list off 10 different explanations I've heard. It's just everything under the sun to try and explain away the person mm-hmm. of Christ. And that, to me, is a, or it always was a red flag, like, mm, why is it that they're trying to lie about Jesus and his history and twist the Bible and undermine scripture if the Bible is really of no threat and if it's just one of many paths to God? How come they always seem to be focusing on um, de-arming that particular religion? Um, exactly. And so there's actually a website um, called alienresistance.org where people who 
mm-hmm. have alien experiences, whether it's, you know, in the spirit or in the natural, when they call out the name of Jesus, the experiences stop. And the the beings, whatever they are, I don't think they're aliens. I think they're, you know, the spirits of dead Nephilim, a.k.a. demons, or they're straight up fallen angels or something in between, some kind of hybrid in between. Um, but they flee. The experiences not only stop, they stop reoccurring. And it's the only thing that's ever been found Mm -hmm. to stop these experiences from, A, continuing to happen in the moment, and B, from reoccurring in the future. You call it to the name of Jesus. And and this is is non-Christian to recognize this stuff. You can go to non-Christian blogs all over the place, and they'll say, call it to the name of Jesus if this is happening. Because there's power power in the name of Jesus. The Father's exalted his name above every other name. So I was getting into the alien research really, really deeply. And uh, that completely threw me off. And that led me to get into, you know, different theories of God and into um, a more universal approach at religion in general. So when it came to God, um, typically, I mean, I was raised as a monotheist, but I started to believe in something called panentheism, which is that God is outside the universe, but he's also inside the universe existing as the universe. So Mm-hmm. The whole universe is God. God exists outside the universe as, you know, I believe, quote unquote, source. I was I was um, split on whether or not he was like personal or impersonal. The majority position is that it's an impersonal source, some kind of like um, divine cosmic battery existing outside the universe. And the, the creation, all of creation is built from God and built of God, of his substance. And so I would be in nature, I'd be meditating, I'd be trying to silence my mind, and I was taught and I fully believed by, you know, I was taught by New Age teachers and I fully believed in my own theology that as I got more silent and reached deeper levels of consciousness Mm -hmm. and started to transcend my personal identity, that I was reunifying with this field that lies at the basis of nature, this unified field, which was a field of intelligence, which was ultimately God, which was the substance of all reality. So I believed that I was God, that, you know, this laptop in front of me was God by virtue of the fact that the substance of all creation in this model is the substance of God. And hence, the only thing keeping us from relationship with God, it has nothing to do with sin in this view. It has to do with ignorance of oneself, ignorance of one's true identity as the I am presence that is within all things. And so I believed this, and this to me explained away Christ, because Christ in this model was someone who realized that he ultimately was the creator. And so he was trying to teach us, according to New Age teachers everywhere, Chopra, Eckhart Tolle, even Oprah. For Winfrey, yeah. for crying out loud, believes that Jesus came here to impart to us mm-hmm. the way to reach Christ consciousness, the state of divine awareness where a person becomes unified with the universal spirit flowing through the universe mm-hmm. that the universe is built from. And so I believe Jesus was someone who became Christ and was trying to tell us we could all become Christ too. Um, and then obviously, yeah. it, it's funny. Um, A lot of people who are in the New Age movement, including myself, at the time, when it comes to the person of Jesus, they have all the theories under the sun, but they'll never open the Gospels to see what the best historical records have to say about him. Um, Mm -hmm. And I feel like I wouldn't have been in good conscience able to believe these things about Christ if I would have just opened up the Gospels and read what he had to say about himself. But I basically got – and then I also believed – I mean, we could talk – but everything I believe would just take, you know, <laughs> months. But I, I believed in reincarnation, for example. I believe that when you die, your soul uh-huh. goes back into some neutral spirit world where you're greeted by your spirit guides, by family members, and then you have a, a short reunion time, and then you're taken away into a review area where you get a life review, where you're shown everything that you did wrong in your life, and then you plan your next mm-hmm. reincarnation to go work on those lessons in the next life. And I believed that with you know 99% mm-hmm. confidence. I believed that there was decent um, evidence to support that in terms of childhood memory. Like children who have memories of past lives, you know, facial facial uh-huh. recognition software between them and the people they claimed to be, 
and all these different things. And I was fully convinced of, of reincarnation and mm-hmm. um, also of like hidden knowledge, things like ley lines, things that there's some kind of like energy grid on the earth that all these um, religious sites have been built on to channel the energy of the earth uh, and, and all these things. And so mm-hmm. um, I eventually created a, a Facebook page called Spirit Science and Metaphysics. And this was as as a way initially to create um, a place to share the research I'd come across with my little brother's friends because they were constantly asking me stuff. They they just were interested. Um, and this was in November of 2012. Created a, a Facebook page, Spirit Science and Metaphysics. I started connecting with you know admins from other Facebook pages, and it grew to 20,000, 100,000, and then 500,000, 500,000 likes. And um, very successful uh, Facebook page. People loved it. People loved my posts. And Mm-hmm. I had this really big network of Facebook pages that I was doing share for shares with. So I would share something off their page. They would share something off mine. And I was, it was, there was like this network and like inner family of new agers that I was a part of. And some of the Facebook pages I was doing shares with were, you know, at the time it would have been higher perspective, collective evolution, um, spirit science, the mind unleashed. And yeah, you know, I was right in there with some of the largest New Age Facebook pages in in the world. Whoa! And um, so basically, I decided, you know, I need to create a website because I I'm the only one here who doesn't have a website to share articles from. And my friend was making told me like, dude, you can make some money off this. So I was like, all right, I'm in. So I made a website, and my website like blew up overnight because my articles were really well written because of the information I had been so thoroughly researching. And, um, you know, my website, the first month was getting, oh man, 200,000 views a day on average, 300,000 views a day on average, you know, I almost got, I almost got a million views one day, uh, on my site. And, um, you know, some of it was health based, but actually the most, successful articles were the ones pertaining to the afterlife, the ones pertaining to near-death experience. Mm-hmm. I had one article um, by Eben Alexander, his book Proof of Heaven, which uh, I like to call Proof of Heathen now because it's just so antithetical to the gospel. Um, but that article alone, it was shared you know, 4.5 million times on Facebook alone. Um, it just went absolutely viral. And, and mm-hmm. so I was, you know, making a lot of ad revenue off this, obviously, you know, well into the five figures a month. And I was mm-hmm. 22 years old at the time, um, you know, living what I believe to be the dream. I might have even been, I might have been 21 at the time, living, you know, the life that I wanted. I was working from home. I went out and bought a, a sports car for myself, cash, um, before money even hit my bank. Um, I was just living it. And I thought I was so just confident in my worldview and I thought that the material success was God's blessing and favor on me. And I remember sitting in my car, my new car, and thinking to myself, you know, God says, seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. And I thought to myself, you know, I'm helping people awaken to a higher state of consciousness. I'm doing God's work, and he's rewarding me. I was totally self-deceived. Um, and so my website continued to be, you know, uh, a huge success, um, reaching millions millions and millions of people each month. And um, I decided to buy my first house. And I was living in uh, a really big, big house at the time. It was like slightly over 4,000 square feet, just kind of ridiculous for someone my age. Um, and I say this not to brag in my past life, but I want people to know like, um, like I was in this, like I was fully convinced I was 100% sincere. This was my whole life. And I had every reason in the world to continue pursuing the path that I did. I had all the financial stability in the world. I had a new website ready to be launched that was going to be a staple in the New Age movement. I had absolutely no reason to turn my back on everything that was making me, you know, making my living, my career. Um, It was something that I truly full-heartedly believed in my heart and mind. Um, And Mm -hmm. just the fruit of it in my life was, you know, it appeared to be blessing. And so I was as I was as lost as I can be. And um, during this time, the whole time I'm writing New Age articles, right, viral New Age articles, um, I'm living in secret sin. I'm living a double life. 
I'm depraved, I'm evil, I'm wicked, my thoughts are evil continuously. Um, greed and vanity were extreme, but those were the least of my issues. My real issues were, uh -huh. um, I guess you could say, uh, violence in my heart and lust in my heart, uh, as well as just general mm -hmm. brokenness from the past, like trauma, twisted it, twistedness in my soul. Mm -hmm. Also just like, just replete with evil in my heart and in my mind. And all this as I'm writing New Age articles and some people might be like, that doesn't, you weren't genuine then. If you were really that evil when you were writing New Age articles, then you weren't really a real New Age or you didn't get it. And I could point you to many people, big names in the mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. who have done the same things I have and worse while running these large New Age websites yeah. while selling tens of millions of books in the New Age movement. Um, I'm not going to you know, spread dirt on people, but people need to realize that it is a culture. It's a culture of hypocr hypocrisy, and it's a culture of um, being a slave to sin and, and a slave to oneself. Um, I've heard, you know, I've heard that you've probably heard too that, that some folks who, who are into, um, you know, Middle Eastern beliefs and so on, Buddhism or Hinduism, or just things of the esoteric where they're in touch with so-called spirit guides and so on, uh, they actually get to the stage where they think they have become so awake and so enlightened that they are actually no longer confined to the, the morality of the human race and they can actually go and commit the kind of a sinful things that at the first part of their of their spiritual walk they um, strove to overcome. Well, the thing is, is that when it comes to the New Age movement, mm -hmm. uh, what the New Age movement does is it, it cherry picks from whatever tradition it wants and leaves out the parts that it doesn't like. So when it comes mm -hmm. to, to Buddhism, um, if you actually look at the, the teachings of Buddhism and of, uh, you know, yoga and uh, different sects of Hinduism, a lot of it has to do with, like, getting rid of desire, like the desires of the flesh. But what people in the New Age movement will do, will they'll, they'll say, well, I'll like Buddhism, I like where it's where it's headed, but I don't want to deny the flesh. I want to indulge in the flesh because this is my life and because, you know, my experience is the only thing that matters. And so it really every everything from every culture that has to do with the denial of oneself and one's passions um, and living in integrity and living a morally righteous life, it is left at the door. And the people in the New Age movement have been given permission by teachers and by their own, you know, themselves. Yeah. to pick a lifestyle that suits them in that moment. Mm -hmm. And so I was a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. um, and it reached a point where I just had a lot of, I was hurting people. I was hurting people and my secrets were coming out. My double life was coming out and a confession started happening. Um, and I was faced to, um, I was forced to face the reality of the life that I'd created for myself I was living in pain. I was causing pain to others. I was twisted beyond what I could fix on my own. And um, in a moment of desperation, I was, you know, I said a prayer with my mom, Jesus. She's been a Christian her whole life, and she's, she was waiting for me to come to the Lord, praying for me the whole time. And I said, like, just a, an initial prayer of salvation with her and um, went to a church service that night. And uh, I felt as though, for the first time, I wanted to give Jesus more of a chance for who he truly was, and as opposed to who I wanted him to be, as opposed to the idol I had created him to be. Um, but I was still living in sin. I still I felt a different orientation about the New Age movement, but I still didn't have the strong conviction, the strong revelation from God. Um, still living in sin, not, not too much changed. After saying that prayer, and then a few weeks went by, and basically uh, another round of confession happened, where I had to, to face yet another destructive, wicked thing that I had been a part of, and the consequences it was having on myself and um, the people around me. And after that, after that, when I was so wrecked, uh, 
and I just realized, you know, what am I doing? Like, I'm, I'm kidding myself. Um, I'm playing myself. I have no strength in myself to overcome evil, to overcome these temptations, to, uh, to follow God. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, mm-hmm. So I knew that Jesus was, he, everyone in the New Age movement who denies Jesus, they don't, ex, most won't explicitly deny Jesus because they want mm-hmm. to try to leave that door open. And the reason they want to leave it open is because they know that he's a force to be reckoned with. They know there's something there that's real, that has authority and power over everything. And so rather than just straight up deny and reject him, they'll, they'll try and accommodate him into their worldview. The problem is, is that when we read... Or they'll try and, they'll try and talk about Christ consciousness and, and that type of thing. Christ consciousness, something like that. But they never want to straight yeah, up deny yeah. Jesus. And I think the reason is, is because... Um, Very few will straight up deny Jesus. They'll just want to say, you know, well, we like Jesus, but his teachings got misunderstood. His teachings got edited. Um, And I Mm -hmm. think the reason is, is because a lot of people know in their spirit that, you know, he's the truth. And like it says in Romans 1, we suppress the truth Mm -hmm. in unrighteousness. And I was suppressing the truth in unrighteousness. And so I, I went outside on the back balcony of my house and I uh, fell on my face before the Lord, before Jesus. And uh, I didn't know, I had nowhere else to turn. And I was just weeping before him. Um, I was just extremely sad, extremely uh, Mm -hmm. traumatized um, and sorry. I was terribly sorry. And I was also, it was also, I guess, tears of repentance. Yeah. I believe God was working in me there to bring me to a place of, of repentance for my, my sin and the life that I had lived. And I was just reaching out to him, um, pushing into him with, with my spirit. And uh, mm-hmm. he responded to me and the atmosphere began, began to fill up with his presence. And it was uh, like a thick glory and uh, a thick love and majesty. And... Mm-hmm. authority there's there's an authority that's like implicit in his presence uh, lordship um yeah. and and i felt in the spirit that he was with me and that i was under his feet that the whole universe was subject to him and that he was he was the king of of me and of everything around me and i was literally engulfed with his spirit and and it was flowing through me and around me and I was I was broken I couldn't stand up I tried to stand up and his spirit was just like forcing breaking me into submission Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and his attention was fully set on me and uh the most remarkable aspect of this was that the the sounds in nature that were around me the the leaves on the trees the crickets in that moment, it was all recognizing him and glorifying him. And, and it, nature itself was was rejoicing in his presence. And that's what I was detecting in my spirit. And I don't know if that's something the Lord showed me. Or if a veil was just dropped and I was seeing that this is something that happens all the time. But... When the presence of the Lord was there, I could I could detect in my spirit that like I wasn't the only one there recognizing His Lordship, that um, nature itself was, and and that's beautiful. Yeah, and that to me, like I, I was picking up on that, and I I directed mm-hmm. my attention to that in the spirit, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh my gosh, like He's Lord, and what stuck out to me was the simplicity of it. You know, it's not Christ mm-hmm. consciousness. He's not a mystic. He's Lord. He's Lord. He's He's King. He's Master. He's Creator. He's God, and He's the Messiah. And I knew it was the Jesus of the New Testament. And uh, what stuck out to me it was just the simplicity of it. Oh my gosh, what was I doing? Jesus is Lord, but the Bible says no one says Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. And I didn't have that revelation. It took the Holy Spirit drawing me for me to be able to see that and filling me for me to be able to see that. And so I went back inside after this experience and um, I started to reflect on the beliefs 
that I had been convinced of in the New Age movement. Um, everything from aliens to channel material to reincarnation to, and I was starting to see patterns mm-hmm. in this stuff that I didn't see before that the Holy Spirit was showing me. Uh, how this was a deception, not only a deception, but like a very carefully and intelligently crafted deception um, against mm-hmm. mankind to lead people away from Jesus. And when you realize that every religious system, apart from Christianity, every you know self-proclaimed prophet, other than everyone speaking in the Bible, um, is set up by, by demonic strategy. Uh-huh. to lead people away from Christ, uh-huh. like your your mind gets blown. And that's one of the first things that people and anyone will realize when they come to the Lord. His spirit fills mm-hmm. you. He lives inside you now. And you get hit with the realization that Jesus is the only way. He's the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. And so I was looking at all these religious systems and, you know, the visitations by quote-unquote aliens in ancient cultures. And I was thinking myself like i was just having my mind blown i was like oh my gosh mm-hmm. this is all a deception so i went and i, I made a status online and I, I repented and i told people like i'm sorry for leaving you guys leading you guys astray and you know this is all strategy set up to keep us from accepting jesus as the son of god and mm-hmm. to keep us in sin and spiritual bondage and lead us to hell and and I guess as well, Stephen, that because I, I've got a similar story to yours and I, I remember that feeling, I, I guess, as well. It's wonderful when we come to Jesus, absolutely. But there's also that feeling of um, trauma or shock, realising that the other things we were involved in were actually demonic. You know, they were demonic beings that we were actually contacting and they were actually demonic lies that reincarnation um people that were having past life memories that it was actually all coming from demons it's a kind of shock to realize that you've been it is as badly as that it was a shock and it made me angry and it made me uh it gave me a fire against the satanic like i have a fire for god burning in my soul all the time and then I also have a fire burning in my soul for hatred towards the satanic kingdom um, because sure. they almost led me to hell. They lead people to hell every day. Uh-huh. And, you know, there's a point where we can say, like, okay, a person's rejecting Christ, a person, you know, they are deceiving their own self. And then there's other times where demons are getting involved mm-hmm. and it's just straight up deception from hell. Yeah. And so my response was, um, anger and and I guess vengeance on on these spirits and and one one uh, encounter that I had back when I was in the New Age movement and and for one for let me just say one thing real quick when it comes to having a righteous mm-hmm. anger towards the principalities of hell you have to make sure that everything you're doing and and projecting towards the satanic satanic kingdom is done with in the positioning of you being in Christ and you being filled with the Holy Ghost and you not stepping outside of the Holy Spirit and getting, you know, puffed up in your own ego and in your own flesh and trying to take yeah. on demons who are way more powerful than you and Satan who is way more powerful mm-hmm. than you apart from mm-hmm. doing things biblically like God prescribed in prayer, in meekness of spirit before God, being spirit filled. There was one time where I was like stepping outside of Christ and like basically challenging them and Mm -hmm. Uh, after I got saved and, you know, thinking that they couldn't touch me. And when I did this, you know, a a broom fell over in my laundry room and I got filled with just pure fear, like pure terror. And I just kept saying Jesus Mm -hmm. over and over again in my heart and head. And I realized, you know, it's only in Jesus that we have power and and protection against this stuff. But when I was in the new age movement, um, long story short, I saw, I saw a demon in my lucid dream, uh, I was in a lucid dream, so I was conscious that I was dreaming. And in my lucid dream, mm-hmm. I got pulled outside of my car while in the lucid dream. And I was hovering over rooftops in my neighborhood. And a being appeared appeared in front of me, and he had red skin and, and black markings on his face. And he was wearing a red cape. And he had uh, a smile on his face, like a sinister kind of grin. And he looked at me, and I looked at him, and then... When he smiled at me, um, an evil, twisted smile, 
Uh, he, he had a third eye on his forehead. Mm-hmm. Oh. And his, his third eye opened. It's going to sound crazy, but his third eye opened at me. Mm-hmm. And it pulled me in to his third eye. And I had this moment of experience of, of like disorientation and darkness. And when I opened my eyes, I was hovering four feet over my own body in my bed, bedroom. So then I was outside of my actual body and I spent the next like two or three minutes fighting to get back into my body. And um, when I woke up out of my out of, out of body experience, I was like, you know, I just got one step closer to hacking the matrix. You know, I understand the nature of reality so well that I can leave my own body now. And when I got saved, I was realizing that demon pulled me out of my body and he was trying to use it to lure me deeper into the satanic kingdom seeing that I was, you know, a threat to their to their kingdom and trying to lure me deeper, but all he did was expose me to more things that I'm able to speak about now. Um, so he basically, mm-hmm. he, he overplayed his cards, I guess, in some instances, but... Mm-hmm. So yeah, I got, I got saved, and then in that moment, I got saved. I was saved, bam, hit with the Holy Spirit, filled, set on fire for God. Um, there wasn't a gradual process... I think a seed got planted in the prayer with my mom, but when I got filled on my on my balcony, I was sold out for Christ immediately. I quit my job, um, put my house up for sale, sold my car, and started ministry. Mm-hmm. My ministry like shortly after that, and um, the backlash. I mean, obviously got lots of backlash. People telling me to kill myself and and all these things. I had, you know. Mm-hmm. It was, it was awesome, though, because I had I had an email list. The email list at that time, I had like 90,000 people on the email list, and, and I sent out this mass email and this post to all my Facebook pages I had access to um, on a video I made called Proof the New Age is Satanic. And I, I took them through the history of the New Age movement, and a lot of people were like, okay, this guy was writing New Age articles for two years, three years for his site and for spiritscience.net. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, how come he's changing all of a sudden? And I think a lot of people got curious and, yeah. you know, that they've kind of been floating around following me from the shadows. And mm-hmm. I've had lots of people message me saying, you know, you pulled me out of the New Age movement. Like, thank you for your videos and your testimony. It, 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 it either invigorated, you know, some people's lives with the Lord or just straight up pulled people out of deception. So praise God for that. He's so good to to use use people such as myself mm-hmm. who were... I was ho- I was hopelessly lost. Yeah. I was hopelessly lost, and he found me. He drew me. He chose me. He saved me. So, glory to him alone. And um, yeah, that's my testimony in a nutshell. Amen. That's that's wonderful, Stephen. It really it really is beautiful. Just just hearing you sharing about your love for for Jesus and and for the truth. Um, uh, some folks might be wondering. Um, I find that many folks who come on my show that have had similar pasts, they, they will share that after they, they came to Jesus, uh, they began to realise that, you know, the activities they had been involved in, whether it was meditation, yoga, channeling and so on, were actually empowered by demons and that they needed deliverance and they would find a, a Christian minister who cast those demons out of them. Did you have that experience Yeah, yourself? so one of the first things that I was led to on YouTube when I got saved was a deliverance minister. Um, I don't agree mm-hmm. with all of his doctrine. I actually debated him on my channel recently. Two years after I watched his videos, two years later I debated him on my on my channel and on his channel on the topic of the Trinity, but he's a deliverance minister, and um, well, I don't agree with a lot of his doctrine. His name's Crystal Sala, and he does deliverance ministry, casting demons out of people, and um, that inspired me to realize, you know, with all the stuff I was involved with, I definitely have stuff attached to me, and inside some area of my soul, not in like the inner chambers where the Holy Spirit is. Um, not in my innermost being, but in some aspect of my mind, my consciousness, there's something yoked onto that still that needs yeah. to get broken off and renounced. And I went to a deliverance minister, and I received formal deliverance, and uh, uh, you know, said my renunciation prayers, and um, mm-hmm. I felt I was getting released from so much things at once that it was causing me to. Uh-huh. To get dizzy and almost pass out, 
Um, and I was getting symptoms like my hands were cramping up and weird things like this. Um, mm-hmm. And I think some of it was from hyperventilation. But I've had other times in prayer, like just with me and the Lord, where when I, when I received big moments of deliverance from something, my most recent example was in, in church, worshiping, praying the Lord. And I had two, it was a little bit rigid of a relationship. And I, I had this, the Holy Spirit showed me that he, Christ is smiling, that he's smiling at me. Oh. Right. Mm-hmm. That he's pleased with his bride. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the Bible says that it's the father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the redemption of the world was the joy that was set before him. And I had this revelation of his love towards everyone. And he was smiling. He's a smiling king. And, you know, he, the joy of the Lord, we're supposed to be filled with the joy of the Lord. But Jesus has joy. I get to the joy of Jesus. And um, mm-hmm. when I had that revelation, I got released from something in my mind, in my spirit. And I almost passed out just from having that, that revelation and realization. And there's been other times too, where I've, I've had another deliverance minister pray over me. Um, and mm-hmm. I think I had an unloving spirit on me and mm-hmm. he was trying to show me, I couldn't understand how God could love me. Right. I had just lived outside of his love and I couldn't understand how could God love me. I'm like a year and a half, mm-hmm. a year saved. And he looked at me and he told me, um, uh, God delights in you. And he, he used that word. And when he used that word, something mm-hmm. shifted in my psychology mm-hmm. and the Holy Spirit will start moving in those new spaces and it, it'll make people, mm-hmm. it releases people of demons and it also gives people, um, re, re, rewires things in their brain, I believe. And it'll make you feel dizzy and make mm-hmm. you feel light and new. And he, then he told me I was getting my identity from the wrong kingdom. That's why I didn't believe that God loved me. And there's been multiple different times. I've been to two different mm-hmm. deliverance ministers. It's really important important to not only get these things cast out of you, break the ties. I think that's essential. I think mm-hmm. when you come to God, you, you need to be saying renunciation mm-hmm. prayers. You need to be getting this, mm-hmm. the new age stuff out of your house, the idols. That was one of the first things the Lord showed me was like, you got idols in your house. Mm-hmm. And my house was like this evil stir in my living room. And I had to go through and clean out my idols, my books, because um, it opens up doorways and portals to the spirit where demons have legal ground yeah. into your life. And so I, I believe renunciation prayers are are um, absolutely essential. And then in addition to that, you need to be renewing your mind with the truth to prevent Mm -hmm. those um, types of thinking from coming back in and giving new legal ground for more deception to take, to take root. And so um, I've actually, I've been to a few different counselors just to receive some personal ministry um, and to receive deliverance. And it's been Mm -hmm. extremely helpful, extremely helpful. We need to be receiving counsel from other brothers and sisters in the Lord, especially when we're when we're involved in you know st- sticky forms of spirituality, we need that stuff yeah. that stuff taken out of our life. Absolutely, and you know I've been saved for twenty years, and I still feel that that's so important, and that I myself, if I need ministry, then I I go and get ministry too, because um, Jesus, you know, it's a lifelong walk with the Lord and sanctification process, and. Um, I I thoroughly agree with with what you shared there. We have three minutes left. Stephen, so um, could you sum up what you want to say? Obviously, you'll need to come back and do part two with us, um, which would be wonderful. Could you um, share, could you pray for our listeners, please? And also um, mention your your, uh, uh, website. Yeah, so my website, my website is reasonsforjesus.com. Um, I'm on YouTube. My name is Stephen Bancars, B-A-N-C-A-R-Z. And um, that's my, I, I make videos on there exposing new age concepts and, you know, correcting misunderstandings in the person of Christ. And with the last few minutes, I, would, I guess I would like to um, say that there's a reason why the new age movement goes so far out of their way to try to account for the words of Jesus and this is because mm-hmm. from the very beginning of time, the only threat to the satanic kingdom has been the one true God. Jesus called the Father the one true God. Mm-hmm. And John one eighteen, uh, John 1 verse 18 says that Jesus in, in, in the ESV translation is the only true God, the only unique God who's at the Father's side. 
So there's a reason why the satanic kingdom hates Jesus and goes after Christ. And that same reason Mm -hmm. is the same reason why people listening right now, they're on the fence and they don't want to full out deny Christ. And that's because something in our spirit knows that Christ has the answer, that Jesus is the answer, but worse, we resist. Um, We suppress the truth for whatever reason. For some people, it's a lot of pain. They've been abused in the past by people in the church. Maybe they feel God doesn't love them or he can't love them like I believed. And I want you to know that you're lovable, you're savable, that you were worth the blood and body of Jesus before you even decided to consider Jesus, before you were saved. If you ever get saved, he gave his body and his blood for you. That's the created value that God sees in you. And I feel like a A lot of people operate under an orphan spirit. They feel abandoned. They feel like they have to struggle for their own power sources, for their own self-affirmation. And when we lay that to the foot of the cross and we realize, you know, God knit me in mother's womb. He called me before the foundation of the world. Um, I was the joy set before him. When we know who our identity is, what our identity is in Jesus Christ, um, that's what he came to give us. He came to restore that which was lost. Yes, he died for our sins. We'll talk about that maybe on the next show died for our sins, that's the atonement. That's why we have to believe on him. In order to be saved, there's no path to heaven except through faith. But it's not just this dry religious system. He, re- he gives you his spirit and he restores in you your self-concept. He says he came to give you life more abundantly. He says he came to heal us. Um, so he came to call his sheep home into a loving relationship into his arms. And it's not a dry religious system. It's Holy Spirit filled. He gives you his spirit and his spirit leads to all truth. And if I didn't have his spirit living in me right now, Mm -hmm. I would not be sharing this. I would still be working in the New Age movement. It's the spirit who bears witness to us that we are the sons of God and that Jesus Mm -hmm. is the only path to God. And so I'd, I'd like to just close in prayer. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to share my testimony with these listeners today, God. I pray that people who are listening, who are who are on the fence about their faith, Lord, I ask that you would remove that fence right now. Lord, that you would just convict them of your lordship and that they would make that decision today to serve you as their king to give you their heart to give you their life lord to believe on you as their lord and savior jesus jesus you said that whoever believes on you out of their their bellies will flow rivers of living water god i pray that people would be hit with the realization that all things good come from you that the gospel is your promise to us to keep us secure in the faith and to give us eternal life, Lord, that we would see you and that we would see love and that we would see the value that you see in us, Lord. I ask God that people would no longer suppress the truth in unrighteousness, that they would see it's not worth it. And Lord, there's people listening right now who are, who are thinking, well, I'll just get right, right with you later. Uh, there might not be a later. There might not be a tomorrow. I ask, Lord, that these people mm. would bend the knee to the cross, Lord. Holy Spirit, that you would just move on them. Show them what what they need to see about who you are and about what they need to confess before you, Lord. Convict them of their sins, Lord. I ask that you would show them how much you love them, how much the price you've paid for them, Lord, and that they would feel overwhelmed by your grace and mercy that while they were still in sin, you still died for them and that you loved us first, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, so much, Stephen, and thank you for coming back soon to do a part two and your website is reasonsforjesus.com wonderful thank you so much and thank you listeners for tuning in today and we hope to speak to you again real soon god bless and bye bye the views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of eternal radio eternal radio Music for your life with Eternal Radio. End Time Hour is broadcast only on Eternal Radio, along with a host of other unique and excellent programs. 
Now Eternal Radio is even easier to listen to. You can do this by simply visiting eternalradio.org.uk. That's eternalradio.org.uk and clicking on the Listen Now link. Alternatively, you can listen in on your phone by downloading the TuneIn app or Eternal Radio's very own dedicated apps for both Android and iPhone. It's also possible to tune in on a variety of other platforms including Amazon's Fire TV. Also, if you have any questions for me or for other Eternal Radio hosts, please email us at onairnow at eternalradio.org.uk That's onairnow at eternalradio.org.uk